Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have some Dollar Tree Farmhouse, of course, DIYs for you. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay friends, so I'm just going to put a disclaimer. There's a lot of moving parts to this video, so it is a little bit longer, but let's just get started. So I had this board from a project that has been sitting in my stash. I had already painted it. It is a longer um, of the signs from Dollar Tree. I believe I got it back around Easter and like I said I had just painted it with some white Waverly chalk paint and I gave it a distressed coat. I then took my monogram transfers from Chalk Couture. I want to show you guys a Cricut is nice, but look how amazing and easy it is to use Chalk Couture in like you don't have to weed and you don't have to go through a bunch of stuff. You just fuzz your transfer. Once you have fuzzed it, fuzz it a little bit more and you lay it down put some paste on it and then you reveal your project so i just pulled out the letters for the word farmhouse now i thought that i had ordered an f but apparently i didn't or i just don't have it one or the other so all i did was take the e for the first letter i covered up that little spot at the bottom where it would make an e and I just transferred it on and then I took a little bit of chalk paste and some water I mixed it up and that is how you can paint with it so I just ended up putting a little tail on the end of the F and I started with the F and the E I put painters tape at the top and bottom so that I know it was even and then I did the middle letter which I believe was H and then I did the um, letters after the F and then the letters after the H just so that way it could all be nice and even. I then laid that out on a piece of foam board and I cut my piece down to the size that I wanted and then once I had that cut off I had a bunch more of these little metal signs um, uh, all I did was take the hanger off of it and then I unscrewed the little design on the front now I always save all my little extras, so I save all the screws and all the little designs on the front of the galvanized metal signs, and then I move on to my foam board. I take some ink Waverly chalk paint, and I just paint the edges as well as right around the frame of this foam board, just so that way if any of it was showing, then you couldn't see the white. I then started at the bottom of my sign, so I glued four of the metal signs down to the bottom, and then I glued four of the metal signs to the top. Now, with working with these galvanized metal signs, I have found that the best way to glue it is to glue on your surface and then lay your sign on top of that. If you try to glue on top of the sign, the glue just dries way too fast. I then took my um, lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and filled in all those holes and then once those holes were filled then I took my sterling silver acrylic paint that I got from Walmart and I filled in all those holes. Next, I take my quarter inch square dowels that are linked in my Amazon store in the description box. And I the, I believe that I used three of these all together. I laid out the bottom piece, measured it, cut it. I then just laid a piece at the top. That way I could get the middle pieces right. And then I took my little mini miter saw and I cut those pieces down to size. After I sanded the edges to my dowels, then I take my Rust-Oleum stain and polyurethane Kona stain and I stain all of my frame pieces. Next, I measure the top and the bottom of my sign and glue that down to the galvanized sign. Once I have that glued down, then I take some Gorilla Contact Adhesive Clear Grip. I put a few dabs on 
each of the dowel rods and then I let that set up for two minutes like the direction says and then I go in in the empty spots with some hot glue and I glue my frame down. Now I like to always start with the top of my frame and then work my way down. That way all of the pieces fit nicely. And then that was it for this project you guys look how amazing this turned out so high end yet so easy and i just love this sign i'm gonna find a spot for it in my home so let me know in the comments down below what you think So if you're new here, my name's Melissa. Nice to meet you. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty and much more. So I would love if you would subscribe and become part of my YouTube family. So each week on my channel, I show you guys my earrings of the week. My sweet subscriber Dawn sent these to me. She took note that I love earrings with tassels and I love how colorful they are. They're very, very lightweight. So thank you so much, Dawn, for sending these to me. If you just click that bell and then all, you'll be notified every single time I upload. And with all that being said, let's jump back into today's DIYs. Moving on to our next project, I take four of these Happy Easter signs from Dollar Tree, and I start by taking the feet off the eyes and the raffia bow as well as the hangers on all of them. I then measure to see where the middle of this sign is and I mark three marks, one in the middle, one at the bottom, and one at the top right in the middle. That way we can kind of do like a score line in the middle to make these look like faux wood. So I do that by taking my Gorilla Mounting Putty onto my quilters ruler and I just put it on either side. That way when I go to make a score line, it doesn't move all over the place. I lay that down and then like I said, I just score it. I then take the quilters ruler off and I continue to score, uh, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, you guys. I continue to score it until I get a nice score line. Once I have that score line, then I kind of go right next to that line. I don't want a big gash, but just enough so that way this makes an indentation in the middle. Like I said, we're going for the look of faux wood. Now, if you have a table saw, you can certainly lower down your, your blade and do this but because this sign is so thin I just was not comfortable doing that so once I had both of the little tiny lines um, cut so basically they're going to meet together I then take a, sty a stylus a I don't even know what you want to call that little tool and I just scratch in the middle to make that cut a little bit deeper. I didn't want to go too too deep because I didn't want to cut this in half but when I paint this you'll see why I definitely focused on that part um, for a good bit. But anyway I then take two of the signs and glue them together with some large popsicle sticks tongue depressors whatever you would like to call them I call them popsicle sticks but that's just me next I go in with my pencil and I just kind of make a mark you can see my eraser marks because I had this like I, I didn't like the way that it looked so it did take me a few tries to just sketch out the shape that I want this and if you haven't guessed it already we're going to be making barn doors but I did want to do something different with my barn doors which is why I wanted to put this little design at the top so once I had the mark where I wanted it all I did was take my utility knife and I just scored along that line once I had it scored probably about five times then I do just kind of bend that part back and here we go you guys I'm showing you that my projects do not go off without hiccups all the time I'm not a perfect crafter and if I mess up I just fix it and I move on so because I had glued all the way to the top I had to flip that over and cut a part of the popsicle stick off and then continue to cut that off 
So once I had the first one cut and sand it down, then before I started cutting, I got a little smart here. I laid this down. You make sure you want to do the opposite so that way you don't have two, um, one on the front, one on the back. Um, but once I had uh, traced that out, then I go in the back and cut that piece before I cut kind of like the arch off. Next, I take some large stir sticks that I had already cut down from a previous project and I painted them white. I only had three of them, so I had I did have to do more, but I put one at the top, one at the bottom, and then two in the middle, kind of making like an M. I marked those where they should be cut so that they meet the top and the bottom part nicely, and then I cut them down. Once I had them cut down, then I still needed to go in, lay them down, and then cut them appropriately so that the middle part would fit together nicely. And the, I mean, you guys, it's so easy. All I did was just lay it down, figure up where it needed to be cut. I just marked it. I don't do any special measurements or anything like that. I just lay it down, mark it, and cut it. I highly suggest if you don't have a saw to definitely um, invest in one. You can do so many different things with a saw. I will leave the one that I use in my Amazon store, but you don't have to get that one. Maybe just so you can get an idea. It's very small. It's only seven and a quarter inch, so it's easy to store, but definitely worth the buy. So anyway, Sorry, I know that was long-winded, but um, I just take those pieces that I cut as well as my little barn doors and I give them all a distress coat of white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I just lay them out and you can see here that I still did not cut them correctly, which is no big deal. I'm going to show you how to fix that because like I said, I'm not a perfect crafter, but you just roll with the punches. But I glued those pieces down and then once I had them glued down and seen like where the cracks are because I didn't cut them right, then all I did was take some wood filler and I just filled in those cracks. And this stuff that I use dries so quick. I mean, by the time I take it out of the container, and lay it down probably in about five to ten minutes it's dry which is why I love this stuff so much but once it's dry I just take my little mini finger sander and I sand those down smooth this is also in my Amazon store but you can find it at Walmart or Home Depot really any store that sells tools and things like that but I just sand those down smooth I make sure to get into the edges and then I use my vacuum and I vacuum all I vacuum up all the dust Next, I fill in those sanded areas with my white Waverly chalk paint, and I am going to show you here in a minute, you guys. Once again, I'm going to reiterate this, that I am not a perfect crafter. I get it wrong all the time, but you guys, if you don't try, you're never going to know if you can do it, but if you mess it up, then just scrap it and do it again. Like I said, it's so fun to learn new things, and I know that you guys can do these projects right along with me but I take these little hinge stickers I don't really know what you want to call them they are puffy stickers from Dollar Tree and they have all different uh, they look like hinges to me all different sorts of hinges um, and I paint those black and then I well at first I laid it down and then I was like wait a minute we got to distress this because I'm putting this up against a white wall I am going to distress it I was going to try to not distress anything for my viewers who don't particularly like distressing but when I put it up against my white wall you really couldn't see it but if you see that V right there you guys I glued those pieces on the wrong way so they would not match up when both the doors were together but it's not a big deal you guys all I did was pop them off I filled in the holes sanded it down and then painted it no big deal you really cannot even tell when they're hanging up so I then place my hinge stickers down and I also had these um, circle circle drawer pulls per usual your girl can't talk <laughs> it just is what it is um but i 
hot glued them down on either side like where a handle would be on a barn door. I set those aside and I still felt like they were missing a little something so all I did was take some thick nautical rope. I measured the uh, like width I guess you want to say of a wreath and then I just glued some greenery down to them and glued them to the middle of each barn door and look how amazing these are you guys I love these barn doors they're different they are farmhousey antiquey I am just so pleased with the way they turned out so per usual let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite So I want to thank Kimberly times three, Tammy and someone for buying me a coffee. If you guys enjoy my work and would like to buy me a coffee and get a shout out in my next video, go to www.buymeacoffee.com slash all things crafty or follow the link in my description box. I appreciate the ones who have bought, bought me a coffee. I also appreciate the ones who can't afford it or who don't. I love all you guys so much. I let you guys know in each video there's more than one way to support your favorite DIYer or YouTuber. You don't have to support them monetarily. You can just click the thumbs up button, comment on the video, um, watch the ads. There's so many different ways you can support your fam your favorite YouTuber. You don't just have to support them monetarily, like I said. So I appreciate every single one of you and let's jump back into today's DIYs. Moving on to our last project, I take two of these decorative boxes from Dollar Tree. I did show you guys the um, SKU number if you wanna try to look them up because I do know that not everybody's Dollar Tree has the same things, but I do wanna give you guys that um, information in case I get asked in the description box or in the comment section. Good Lord, you guys. <laughs> I take the stickers off with my blow dryer and then I take two uh, hurricanes from, or one is a hurricane, the other one is a vase from Dollar Tree. I take the stickers off of those as well and then I take my Goo Gone from Dollar Tree as well and I take that glue residue off. So once I, I also took the labels off of the decorative boxes and I set those aside. So once I had everything cleaned off, I stand my hurricane and my vase up on top of the box. I should say I flipped it over, put the stuff on top, and then I take those same exact square dowels that I used in our farmhouse sign. I stand them up next to the vase and the hurricane, and I mark probably about an inch above that and then I go to my little mini miter saw which is also linked in my Amazon favorites I love this thing you guys it comes in handy so much and I um, put it on a 20 degree angle and then I cut I then just cut the bottom fl uh, like straight and then I measure the other pieces so I did four of like the taller ones and then four of the smaller ones obviously because one is going to be bigger than the other and then I had these scrap pieces laying around from a different project and it just so happened that they fit perfectly on the top of the bottom part so that way I mean obviously they're not going to touch because I'm going to put a top on these anyway but this was the easiest way that I could figure out how to get this to look like a lantern in the design that I had in my head. So once I had all the bottom pieces cut then I take that scrap piece I make like I said it fit perfect so I made sure that it would fit perfectly and then I laid it down on my dowel and marked it and then cut those as well so the bottom pieces are also going to be cut at a 20 degree angle and then the top piece 
of the top piece if that makes any sense um, I also just cut those at a 20 degree because it's not really going to matter since we're going to cover that up I hope that made sense if not you can slow the video down and you can see what I did again and again but next, once I had all my pieces cut, then I glue the top piece to the bottom piece with some hot glue. Next, I take my mounting putty and I just put those where I'm going to glue them down. I didn't want to glue them down just yet because we are going to be spray painting the top and the bottom pieces. And the way that my mind works is... I want to get all the pieces done so that I can paint and spray paint all the pieces at the same time so that way I don't have to wait for the spray paint or paint to dry. So I just hold up a small stir stick to the top of each and I cut those down four pieces. One is going to be three inches and the other is going to be four inches. For two of the pieces, you're going to cut those down an eighth of an inch smaller so that way you have a perfect square. I did not do that. I found out the hard way, but I did want to let you guys know that so that you didn't make the same mistake that I did. So once I had all my pieces cut and glued together, I did glue those together with some hot glue. Then I go back in with another small stir stick. I measured the top pieces and I cut those down as well. For the smaller box, I needed three pieces. For the bigger, for the bigger box, I needed four. And then for the fourth one, I measured and I cut that down with my utility knife. Once I had all those pieces cut down, then I do just glue those to the top with some hot glue. Next, I sand down that residue on these boxes. I then went in with my Rust-Oleum Hammered Silver Spray Paint and I did spray paint the bottom and the top of our lantern. Once I had those spray painted, then I took three parts antique wax, one part black, and three parts water. I mixed it until it was smooth, just like a stain, and then I quote unquote stained all of our side pieces. While all those pieces were drying, I took my circle cutter and some foam board. I also had these old candle lids laying around in my stash. See, this is why us crafters never throw anything away because you never know what piece or what part of something you're going to need and these ended up working out perfectly for this. So I just kind of measured how big I needed my circle to cover up that wording and I just cut two pieces of foam board in a circle. If it was a little bit too big then I just cut it down with my scissors. I hot glued my foam board into the lid of the candle uh, lid and then I painted it with some truffle Waverly chalk paint. Next, I take a natural sponge that I get, I think it comes in a pack of five from Walmart. I know that the brand is by Folk Art, and I take some Elephant Waverly Chalk Paint. I dab it on the end of my natural sponge, and then I just randomly dab all the way around the parts that, or the pieces that I spray painted with my hammered spray paint. So basically, with this galvanized technique, if you have been around for any amount of time, you know that I love this technique, and I usually explain it, but for the new people, once you spray paint or paint anything with the silver, it's a little bit too bright. So the elephant is going to tone that silver down and then you're going to take some white Waverly chalk paint and dab a little bit lighter than you did the elephant 
and the white is going to make it look like galvanized metal so if you went if you go a little too crazy with the white like I normally do then I usually just go back in with my elephant and I tone that white down I do do that to all four pieces and then once I have all my pieces galvanized then I screw down our label holders that were already on there but I do them upside down if that makes sense so originally they were right side up but because we are using the top of or the bottom of these boxes you want to glue them down the opposite way next i take our candle lids and i glue them down to the middle of each of the boxes with some hot glue obviously i put the smaller one on the smaller box and the larger one on the larger box and then i go in with some hot glue again and i glue down the side pieces to both So once I was done that step, then I went to go put the top piece on and I realized that it was just a little bit too thick for my liking. So if you do this project and you don't like a thicker top, then definitely just cut down your side pieces of the box before you glue it together. But it really was no big deal. These cut down so easily. I only scored it about four times on each on each side and then it popped right off so it really was no big deal to me but I did do that to both of them and then I just painted that bare edge with my sterling silver acrylic paint I then take some hot glue on the top of those dowel rods I lay my box out just to make sure that it looked right before I glue it down and then like I said I just glued the top of those dowels and I lay the top on. I do that for both of them once again. I then took those circle drawer pulls that we used on the barn doors. I will have them in my Amazon store as well. Anything that you're looking for, if I can link it in my Amazon store, I surely will. So definitely check there first. Um, but I do just glue those to the top middle with some hot glue as well. And you guys, at this point, I was getting so excited because when I first started this project, I was not too sure how it was going to turn out. But once I had it all put together and all there was left to do was to put some faux rust on it and a few other little details... Um, I was just so happy with this already. So I did just go in with some antique Waverly chalk paint or antique wax, I should say, um, by Waverly. And I focus on the edges and then I randomly just put dots all or not dots. I randomly just kind of paint and I didn't want this to look uniformed which is why I just randomly did it but I have found with this antique wax if you lay it on thick let it sit for a minute and then go back and like wipe it down just a little bit with your dry brush then it really looks like rust and I think it looks so amazing against this faux galvanized metal so if you don't like the rust you can leave that off it's totally up to you but I did do that to the bottom and the top of the or the sides and the top of the boxes on the top and the bottom I know that was like a tongue twister but the top of the lantern and the bottom of the lantern I did the same exact thing I should have said <laughs> Once I had my uh, faux rust on there, then I still felt that it was missing just a little something. So once I get once again, I made kind of like a wreath for the bottom of the candles, and I just took my jute once again, or my nautical rope, I should say. I laid it down on the candle, like the edge of it, the candle holder. I keep calling it a candle holder because it is a candle holder now but the candle lid and I just kind of measure that I glue the end together and then I just put some greenery on there with some hot glue and then it didn't want to fit around the bottom of the candle holder so all I did was kind of like shimmy it on so I laid my hurricane in the middle 
and then I just kind of shimmied it around the bottom until it went up the hurricane a little bit and then I put it into my lantern and then pushed it down onto the candle lid and then you guys literally that was it I love these projects this week so much per usual I can't pick a favorite I don't know it might be these lanterns it might be the barn doors <sighs> I hate this decision so you guys know that I don't want to pick but I know you'll let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite which project wowed you this week and I just want to thank you guys so so much for stopping by if nobody has told you today you are absolutely gorgeous you are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul if you haven't clicked that subscribe button you might as well become part of the family you don't want to miss another Dollar Tree farmhouse moment also if you guys would give me a big thumbs up if you enjoy it share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help youtube to notice me just a bit more and with all that being said i hope you guys have an amazing week stay tuned we are going to do a 50k giveaway hopefully next week i got to figure out all the ins and outs of it i didn't want to rush it because i want it to be really special i I appreciate you guys more than you'll ever know so like I said stay tuned for that and I will catch you guys in the next one bye